Alrighty, welcome back everybody. This is Mike, and this is a continuation of my tutorial I started. Uh, our first episode was on hidden noise traps. If you haven't seen that, uh, please uh, check the links below. Um, this is going to be sort of a continuation of, of that. Uh, however, it's going to be dealing with hiding stuff in terrain, and this is going to be a multi-part uh, tutorial. Uh, this one is just going to be a very quick and easy one. Um, so... One thing we actually have to start off with uh, when dealing with terrain is a function that sort of existed uh, but wasn't really accessible to everybody. Um, again, this is this is more targeted towards your, the prefabbers out there. Um, if you've done uh, prefabs before, you you know that uh, this has been kind of a pain in the butt having these gutters anytime you had a terrain block meet up with a, a building block. Um, you There was a way of fixing that, if you're familiar with the Pillies editor, um, where you could kind of get rid of these gutters. Uh, you could sort of do it in Alpha 19 in previous uh, prefab editor, uh, but it would only take it so far. And basically the fix for that is to play around with what they call densities. Um, so basically what we want to do is to suck these terrain blocks um, all the way up to these edges. Uh, and the easiest way to do that is to select the rows that are adjacent to your terrain. Uh, so I'm going to hit Shift Z to select the box I'm pointed at. If I just hit uh, Z here, it would select the box above it. However, if you use the Shift Z, it will select the one you're actually pointing at. I'll do that there, and I'll do the same thing, Shift Z here, so I have a selection. And to control your densities, it's generally your up and down arrows on your keys, uh, but they've made it so that's a one-step process for getting rid of the gutters by hitting Control Up Arrow. And you see that got rid of that. If I hit control down arrow, it takes it back down to default. If I just use my arrow key one time, you know, one click at a time, I can get it up there eventually. Uh, in the past, I think of the max we could get was somewhere around there, uh, but they've loosened that up so you can actually suck it in a lot more. So that's that's how you get rid of your your terrain gutters. And we're going to be using that same sort of function to hide stuff. Um, just kind of going back on these gutters. One thing you have to to kind of uh, keep in mind. Uh, these are generally, you know, you're, you're gonna have a foundation of a house that's budding up to terrain, um, and you might have a basement or something like that. Uh, what you wanna make sure is if you wanted to use this function um, to suck terrain up to somewhere where there's a, you know, an inner wall, um, you wanna try to use solid blocks. So here you ha I have uh, some step blocks and here I have a half block. If I use the same function, I'll just go ahead and select that with my Shift Z. I'll select this with my Shift Z. And now when I hit the control up arrow, you see what's happened is it sucked that terrain. And basically what, what it's doing is it's changed the density of these blocks that I have highlighted. So they're kind of like a black hole you know, high gravity where it's, it's sucking everything in towards it. Uh, so these ones that are not full blocks, um, it's actually going to suck the terrain all the way through it. Um, so you can, you can use your down arrow key to adjust that to get it as close as you can, but you're still going to end up getting a, a, a gutter there. Uh, so just kind of as a, a, something to look forward as you're, you're building POIs. If you are going to have basements and you do want to have the terrain, uh, nice and clean. Uh, make sure you use full blocks uh, for your basement as opposed to you know partial blocks for your basement because otherwise um, you're not going to get those nice clean uh, uh, gutter fills and, and you'll have stuff you know poking into your basement. So this density thing is what we're going to use to uh, to hide stuff underground. Um, like I mentioned, the last class we had was uh, hiding noise traps, and you can actually hide noise traps in the ground so you can't see them. So we have this uh, block of stone here, um, but if you listen as I walk across it, you can hear a whole bunch of noise. And this is basically, let me go ahead and get down here. I'm inside the uh, the terrain block here, and you can see I have all these noise traps down here. Um, so you're thinking, well, I'm I'm like, whoops, I'm more than a block above that. Why? Why is it still making noise? I'm not positive on this. I'm just speculating. Um, but basically, well, let me let me just show you how this is done, and then we'll kind of get more into the explanation. Uh, so I have a similar terrain block. I'm using different. I'm using the uh, the uh, the topsoil block here. So to, in order to do the exact same thing there, um, what I'm what I ended up doing is I just eliminated this entire middle row 
of terrain. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit my shift Z here, go over here and hit my shift Z there and then hit J and that eliminates it. So I basically have a very long, elongated donut. Um, so let me go ahead and um, I need to grab, I didn't grab my, uh, my noise trap here. Let me just go ahead and go over here. Um, if you want to replicate something in the uh, prefab editor, uh, rather than go search for it, you already have it in there. Um, if you, as long as you have an empty slot in your toolbox, in your toolbox, all you have to do is click on your scroll wheel. So your middle mouse button, however you want to look at that, um, and it will add a copy of that um, into your tool button. You see, it added it right down there. So now I have now I have the noise trap. I didn't have to go into the mini to find it. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing I did over there and just line this entire area with with noise traps. So I'm going to have my Z hit Z again, so I get that fill. I have the the block that I'm holding oriented the way I want to, and I'm going to hit the L button on my keyboard and that fills that area. So we got that those noise blocks. You can hear me walking over them, making a lot of noise. So now we're going to basically cover this with soil. Um, terrain blocks are weird um, in this game. It's the whole part of the, if you've heard the term voxel, um, they're destructible blocks and it's, it's basically your world consists of a grid square um, in three dimensions. Um, you know, our train blocks, they make a lot of sense. They, they have sides and dimensions and ups and downs and textures and whatnot. Train blocks are, are weird in that they more act like soap bubbles, um, where if you put one block on the ground and you put another one next to it, they're going to merge together to kind of form one solid block. And if you poke your head inside it, um, you just have one surface as opposed to you know, these blocks, they all have, you know, very distinct sides. Um, so the interesting thing about this is that when you start playing with a density, um, you can basically wrap the bubble shell around other items. Um, so like I said, we have this elongated donut of terrain here. I'm going to go ahead and select my noise uh, blocks here. I'm going to hit shift Z to select those. And now I'm going to hit the control up arrow again, just like what I did for, for the gutters over here. I'm going to do the same thing here. Let me fly up here so you can watch what happens. I'm going to hit my control up arrow. And basically it created a skin around that those, those noise blocks. The noise blocks are still there. And what's really interesting is that when I walk over this, it's making the noise. But I'm, I'm more than a block above the noise traps and if you know the mechanics you know generally you know the noise trap is a one by one meter block i should be above that so it shouldn't be making any noise well for whatever reason the game still even though i can walk on this let me get myself flying here even though i can walk on this middle section as far as the collision box is concerned as far as my feet are related it still sees this as being an open space. Uh, it, 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 it basically thinks there's nothing here. And for whatever reason, the hitbox for the noise traps extends above this meter. And I can, I can actually raise this even higher. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to select the area above the, uh, the train that I have here. So I don't have it selected, I have the air above it. And I'm gonna start hitting my up arrow key and you can see I am raising that up. So I'm increasing the density of the air and it's sucking these terrain blocks upwards. So I've got that about, that's probably about half a block higher than uh, it normally would be. So if I jump on here, it's still making the noise. So whatever magic is in the, the game engine, um, it still sees this as an open space and it still sees me walking on these noise traps. Um, so that's how you can make uh, hidden hidden noise traps. Um, you can do this with other things. Let's take, for example, let's go ahead and create ourselves another uh, thing here. Let me move that out of the side here. Let's make another strip right here, and we'll uh, we'll again use the um, the topsoil. I'm going to hit the L with this topsoil in my hand. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to select. Shift Z, 
shift Z and J to eliminate. And I want to grab myself some mines. Uh, this is a, another interesting thing is that if it makes noise when I walk across it, even though I'm not on it, the same thing actually happens with a mine. So I've got, I still have the same area selected. I have the mine in my hand. I'm gonna hit the L key and it fills that space with the mines, nice and handy. I go ahead and reselect this area again and hit my up arrow key and it crosses that, that boundary. Now, if I walk on across this, now in, in prefab editor, they're not gonna blow up, but they will at least make the clicking noise as you will walk across them. So these are all active mines. They are totally invisible and you can really kind of screw over your players uh, as much as you want. This is not something I would use too often because, you know, part of the game is, you know, trying to avoid, you know, either by stealth or by sneakiness, whatever it is. Um, so if you overdo overkill, pun intended, uh, with having hidden mines, you're basically going to have people who are not going to want to go through your POIs anymore. And it's, you know, my philosophy is I want as many people to, to play my POIs. Uh, I want them to enjoy them. And if I make them like I'm an asshole, they're just going to be not wanting to play them. So use these very judiciously. Um, it's not something you want to do all the time. Um, so again, that, that's what you can do there. And again, you can raise the terrain up if you wanted to, and it would still activate those mines. Um, other things you can hide is pretty much whatever your heart desires. I've got this huge block here. And as I'm running my gun, you can see all these highlights. I've got a hidden stash. I've got a death safe. Um, I've got, you know, some more saves, more hidden stash. And if I go into my fly mode and pop down in here, basically I've created a bubble of terrain um, around a bunch of loot. Now it's kind of a kind of difficult to get into. Now some of these ones you can actually search from here. So the ones that actually highlight, I can actually, uh, so if I can get one of those boxes, if I search it, I can actually access it from above the ground. Um, the safe, same thing. Anything that pops up um, with a highlight when you go over it, you'll be able to raid. Certain things like maybe this ammo pile, I guess you can search that as well. Um, if you wanted to try to dig into this, this is this is kind of a pain in the butt because just like this one over here, the only terrain that the game sees is the terrain around the edges, and this is kind of a skin. So I could sit here and pound on this, but if I'm hitting right here, I'm actually going to be destroying the reinforced chest. Um, like I said, the terrain blocks are really weird. They don't act like what you would expect. Um, it gives you kind of some fun things to do, but it can also be kind of a pain in the butt. Again, this is a, a, it doesn't really matter what size of the gap is. So here I have a huge uh, minefield here. I'm going to go ahead and select these uh, corners here. And I'm going to hit the uh, control up arrow key. And it fills that up. Now, what you're going to notice here is that it's not taking on the texture of the actual terrain block. So what happens is anytime you do this, when you're on top of any building style blocks, meaning non-terrain blocks, um, it's going to take on the texture of your regular stone blocks. Um, you can get by that. So say for instance, I wanted to, you know, I wanted to have a nice field here. Um, what you would want to do is have another layer of the topsoil underneath it or whatever of the stone that you're dealing with. Uh, you can do this with any of the ores, sandstone, you name it. Uh, so over here I have two layers of the, um, of the topsoil. Now if I go ahead and do my controls, I'm just going to take off this top little layer here with the, with the border remaining. I'm just going to replace it with the mines, just make it easy, uh, hitting the L key. And now that I still have those selected, I'm going to hit control up arrow. And now you see it's still grass because I have this layer of grass underneath it. Uh, so if you don't want to give away um, where your mines are, um, then you would want to do two layers. Now, what I like to do is, say for instance, I, I have a military base and I've got a double... Uh, double wire barrier that you know has a minefield in it 
um, that you know the players might decide to go through. I do want to give them the opportunity to be able to detect the mines. Um, so what I would normally do is I would put a lower layer of, say, gravel. So let's go ahead and do this first layer with gravel and my L key, and then I'll move this up one level and I'll put topsoil on this one, hit the L key again. Now I'm just gonna randomly place, I'm just gonna randomly you know, shoot some holes in here and just put mines in these various locations. Let me go ahead and pop this in there, like so. And that's it. So I need to go ahead and select. So I'm going to use my shift key because I want to actually select the mine block and then hit, hit my, hit my uh, control up arrow. And now you see it's taken on the texture of the gravel layer. So now I have some sort of visual representation of where a mine might be. Now you can put some fake ones in there if you want to. Um, but again, I, I, I don't intend to be you know, kind of an asshole to the players. I do want them to have fun and I don't want them to just get frustrated because they're getting killed all the time. Um, I do want to give them an opportunity. They might get killed the first time they go in there, uh, but they will hopefully learn a lesson. Hey, I don't need to walk on these, these lighter spots because I'll blow up that away. So again, you do your shift C to select the mine, control up arrow, and that uh, hides, hides it in there. If I, if I sneak underground here, you see those mines are kind of just floating up in the ground. So that's a real quick and dirty uh, uh, tutorial on how to hide stuff underground. Um, the next episode is going to take this a little bit further um, using the terrain trick to have hidden zombies. Uh, so I look forward to uh, throwing that together for you. So I hope you've uh, picked up some, some tips on this. If you have any questions, just uh, leave a note down below. I'd like to thank you all for joining me and hope to see you again soon. Take care.